I'm surprised the customers didn't leave as soon as they saw this guy from the front door in his all too small GameStop uniform and the dirty, sweat soaked and grease dripping cargo shorts. Y'all live in the south or something? Is it rather humid or he's just a sweaty guy? Hello friends and welcome back to Red X here source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet promise swearsies it's just a fact and it's totally science go ahead and look it up thank you so much we've gotten a lot of leg beard sagas on the channel recently but I saw this neck beard saga come across my desk and I'm like yeah okay it doesn't seem too egregious it's about gatekeeping we'll get to it at some point well that point has now arrived so let's go ahead and get on into this thing Lord Neo, the neckbeard, gatekeeper of all that is nerdy. Part one? Oh, maybe. <laughs> there is a part two. We're probably going to get to it today. We'll, we'll see how it goes. So I was told by one of my siblings to repost my story here to see if his favorite YouTuber would love to hear about my years of being with neckbeards. So, shout out to my little brother Maddox for making me repost here, as I originally posted in r slash Tales of Neckbeards, and uh, let me know if more parts are wanted. I mean, you can write them if you want. I ain't gonna twist your arm about it, but truly big shout outs to the brother. Spreading the word of Red X Industries, word of mouth is the strongest advertisement we got. <laughs> Working in retail for 15 years does something to you. God, you made it for 15 years? Stronger person than me. <laughs> Especially if that 15 years are you working retail at GameStop. Oh, GameStop neckbeards, I have missed it. Okay, yeah, we need more stories, more parts for real. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. It's about a weird customer that wouldn't stop coming in and seeing you and other female coworkers to show off how neckbeardy he was. Buzzer noise, eh. Wrong! You lose! Good day, sir! That was my presumption, actually. It's kind of what I was hoping for. But that's fine. Surprise me. Throw me for a loop. This was a neckbeard co-worker who, for a short time, was a manager when I came in as a key holder, which is a worker without a title, essentially. But when that store is the only game store in a small town, it's not that hard to become a manager. But anyway, I'll lay out the characters before getting into the meat of things. I kind of want to get a job at a game store in a small town, but not actually. I just sort of want to be a fly on the wall, you know? <laughs> I am a fly on the wall, a fly seen it all. We've got Doodle, that's R.O.P. I was called my gamer tag when my coworkers and I played games after work. Yeah, I get it. Sometimes the online persona's strong. My wife calls me red sometimes. My buzz buddy in the world? Yeah, I actually do call him Ramtide most of the time. Uh, we've also got Nick, the store head. Chill dude with the body of a twig, but he's like a sick skater guy who would come in on certain days since all he did was take shipments, place orders, and did all the paperwork. Maddie is manager one, could fix any console or controller you gave him, and was the buff dude that looked like Agent 47, but with a goatee. Is store head different from manager? Nick owns the store? But it's a game store. He owns the franchise store? I'm very confused. <laughs> We've also got RJ, another key holder. We went to high school together. He graduated a year before me and was my best friend who helped me get the job. Super cool and knows all about World of Warcraft. Yeah, that was a lot cooler 15 years ago. You want to talk to me about retail nowadays? No, nah, I'm, <laughs> I'm checked out. Uh, we've also got Neo, the Lord himself. His real name will be revealed later, but he called himself Neo. <laughs> uh, and yes, he would wear a black uh, leather trench coat. Couldn't afford the real leather, huh? Had to go with the pleather? That's fine, just please don't call yourself Neo. <laughs> you gotta earn a nickname like that, you can't just give it to yourself. Uh, now that the intros are over, grab your snacks and drinks and make sure to bring your umbrellas because this one is gonna be cloudy with a chance of sweat from this story. That good old gamer sweat. It's at least 15% caffeine. The year was 2008. 
I was 17, and it was my senior year of high school. I had just gotten a job at GameStop during the hype of Super Smash Bros. Brawl. It was a week or two into the month of October, and we were preparing for the release of Fallout 3. I was also really excited, as the Fallout games were some of the first games that I'd played, and that me and my dad played together. Nice, clashy. Not many people play 1 and 2. You've quickly earned a couple of points in my book, OP. <laughs> and working for GameStop, employees are indeed able to pre-order the games early and have their games set aside so they aren't mixed up with the other pre-orders and regular stock. So using my first few paychecks that I saved up, I was one of the few that were able to get the pre-order for Fallout 3 Collector's Edition. Pretty sick. I don't know what's in it. I do remember Ramtide bringing home the New Vegas Collector's Edition, and it had like a chip from all of the casinos. It was really neat. <laughs> we were getting the early stock of all the games and collector's editions of it, and I made sure to confirm with Nick that I was setting mine aside, and I gave him my order confirmation so he could make sure that it was addressed to me. So I took my Fallout lunchbox and put it over my locker in the break room and make sure to keep it sealed in the package and wrote my name on a piece of paper to make sure everyone knew not to put it on the shelf and to not mess with it. You are going to open the lunchbox, right? These things are made to be used. Then again, I don't know, 50 years down the road, you might wish you didn't open it. Maybe one of your coworkers is going to open it for you. <laughs> so after we finished preparing, it was me, Maddie, and RJ working the day. I was scheduled for the whole day, and RJ was leaving, which meant it would be me, Maddie, and someone else working for the rest of the day. And I dreaded who that someone else might be. I had worked a few shifts with him a few times before, but only for an hour or two before I left, since he mainly worked the closing shifts. I kept a low profile and didn't nerd out much around him, since every time he spoke to a customer, he would gatekeep to hell about any game that they were looking for or buying. <laughs> to the point where some of them would just say, you know what, never mind, and leave. I mean, I'm kind of about that, not taking disrespect, but I don't really want to be inconvenienced in that way, so yeah, tell him to his face. Your opinion on video games means nothing to me. Ring up my merchandise, peon! <laughs> I'm surprised the customers didn't leave as soon as they saw this guy from the front door in his all-too-small GameStop uniform and the dirty, sweat-soaked, and grease-dripping cargo shorts. Y'all live in the south or something? Is it rather humid, or he's just a sweaty guy? Wow! Okay! That's why you gotta remember to baby powder your crevices. It's a tip for all the big boys out there. So yes, Neo walked in, huffing and sweating the Nile River out behind him, with his black trench coat also getting soaked in it. Oh, it's not the humidity, y'all. It's the, it's the giant trench coat. I forgot. <laughs> he gave us a grunt and a half-assed wave and waddled his way towards the back. I glanced over at Maddie and whispered, OP, I don't want to be on register with him. Please? Maddie shakes his head. I won't put you on the register with him. Don't worry. OP sighs. <sighs> Thank you. We heard the break room door open and heard his wheezy and fake deep voice chuckles as he is holding my Fallout 3 lunchbox. Oh, here we go. He lumbers over to the desk and slams the box onto it and I flinch in reaction, thinking that he might have just dented the lunchbox he gave me the light skin stare, or some weird version of it. And for the uninitiated, the light skin stare is a, a furrowed brow and pursed lips. It looks somewhat seductive. Probably not on Neo when he does it, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Neo looked more like a triple-chinned vector, looking at me with a perverted grin. Neo, <laughs> let me guess. Your friend asked you to buy this? <laughs> OP, no, it's mine. I bought it for myself. Neo, <laughs> no way a female such as yourself would ever handle Fallout 3, let alone understand it. <laughs> OP, I do actually play it. 
I've been playing since I was a kid. I gesture to the Fallout sticker on my work tag. Oh nice, you got your pieces of flair there, OP. How many pieces of flair do you have to wear at GameStop? We need to talk. Do you know what this is about? My, uh, flair? I guess when Fallout 3 came out, it was a relatively niche thing. It's become an absolute juggernaut since then. And it makes me happy that that really probably frustrates Neo for some reason. It's like hipsters when a band gets popular. You should be happy that something that you like succeeded, but instead, you just feel like a poser because you tell everybody, I, I discovered that thing before you, and nobody actually cares. <laughs> uh, Neo, <laughs> if that is so, which it's not. <laughs> Snicker snort and glances to Maddie to join in with him. And Maddie is stone cold staring ahead of him. Uh, how about you name four cities from Fallout 2? God, this is, this is classic gatekeeping. It's like the same thing you, you see a chick in a Metallica t-shirt. You're like, Ugh, name four songs. Whatever, man. Who gives a shit how deeply she's invested? <laughs> uh, OP says, why do I have to prove anything to you? Why don't you name four cities from Fallout 2? And then I glare at the sweating pile of lard wheezing before me. Neo again gives the light skin stare, but done kind of shitty. Hey, easy, the glow, Jugtown Brotherhood, and the Cathedral. <laughs> Wheezes and sweats from talking too much. Yeah, and just from existing in general. <laughs> Maddie, you fucking idiot! Rubs hands against face, trying to hide his grin, and walks over to the computer to look up the cities. Go on, OP. Name your four without copying his. He keeps holding back his giggles and smiles. OP is also holding back a burst of laughter, and she says, Uh, Navarro, Klamath, Sierra Army Depot, and the Broken Hills. Neo waddles behind Maddie and places a sweaty, exploding sausage hand on Maddie's shoulder in a friendly manner. <laughs> Let's see if she's right. Women don't know games like us. <laughs> don't pull me into your shit pile, son. Neo spoke with flabby cheeks and small pants and wheezes. Maddie pulls up a website and looks at the cities in the game. Maddie lets out a burst of laughter and points the screen towards Neo. <laughs> idiot! You named the wrong cities! <laughs> uh, this is how we pass our work day, is it? I'm kinda into it, honestly. Making fun of Neo will make the days go way faster. <laughs> uh, Neo's flabby face turned redder than the McDonald's red that he obviously knew all too well as he took hold of the computer mouse and scrolled, seeing that he was now proven wrong. He had named cities from Fallout, not Fallout 2. With this turning of the tables, me and Maddie just died laughing as finally the Gatekeeper was defeated! It felt like the fight against Virgil in Devil May Cry 3. It was so liberating and I felt like a god when I defeated him. Yeah, the crappy part is he's just going to continue on and pretend like it never happened. <laughs> but for now, Neo was as silent as the steam that was coming off of his greasy head and long hair. The rat tail he had almost started to rattle like a rattlesnake's tail. <laughs> I love that visual. Uh, Neo, I, uh, I, it was a lucky shot. I let you win to see if you would actually name the correct ones. Oh yeah, 40 chess out here, huh? <laughs> it was all he could say while me and Maddie were coming down from a laughing high. But it was like that for the rest of the shift. Neo stayed quiet and didn't gatekeep any games that the customers came in to buy. The silence from him was perfect and all felt right in the world, but... It was only the beginning of the storm that I and others were about to face. Little did we know that Neo would be a multi-stage beast of a boss. I always expect it from beards, honestly. They're nothing if not persistent. If you'd like more parts of uh, the few years that I worked with Neo the Gatekeeper, let me know. 
I have many to share of my times working there, seeing him outside work, and maybe a typical romance trope. Who knows? See you suckers next time in this wasteland of neckbeards. Relatively short, but we started out with the defeat of the neckbeard, which uh, always sets things off on the right foot, you know? I do hope that the neckbeard gets a few jabs in, which uh, is what keeps things interesting in these stories, and I guess we'll find out about all that in part number two, which is significantly longer than this one. So let's jump into it right now. Lord Neo the Neckbeard, Gatekeeper Part 2, Extreme Encounter. Hell yeah, 90s kids, we love extreme. <laughs> so after a few DMs of questions and what'll happen next, I'm back with another tale of the retail neckbeard, Neo. So sit back, grab your raincoats because there's a storm a-brewing and it's gonna be a sweaty one. Castless, it's the same. Let's get her done! <laughs> so it's now December, and with that comes people flooding the store to buy the game that the gamer of the family oh so desired, so it means constantly being busy. But to me, that meant a great big fat paycheck, but to a certain smelly one, it meant that he really got to shine brighter than his greasy forehead. Is it a sales job? I guess it is. That's why they always ask you if you want a power card or whatever it's supposed to be. Neo was trying to make up for his failure in the Fallout incident, so non-stop, every shift, we had to endure the constant noise of this raggedy breath idiot. <laughs> but he would stop when Maddie had had enough and made him go back and grab some stock and restock the shelves. And when he did that, he put on his headphones and blared some weird EDM music or whatever. EDM kind of lit, though. <laughs> it was a quiet day at work, as the cold made the people of Texas worry that we would have to attempt to drive on ice. Oh, leather trench coat in Texas. Yeah, that's a stupid idea. <laughs> Is he still sweaty even in December? Inquiring minds want to know. So, the store was empty. I picked up RJ's shift and would be working from opening until closing. Oh, a clopin. If that ain't the most miserable thing. <laughs> so yeah, it was the closing hour and we were all cleaning and locking up the cases and the registers. OP says, hey, did you see the text from RJ? He's having a small Christmas party at his place. Wanna go? Maddie? Yeah, sure. It's the weekend anyway and we don't work tomorrow. Let me give you a ride. I don't want you driving on the ice. His voice was stern, but caring, which is understandable since I had a crappy 2004 Mazda Tribute that could barely hit over 50 miles per hour without making a weird noise. What kind of noise? Like a... Your brakes are grinding. It was then that the wheezing of an eavesdropper could be heard from the opposite side of the counter. Neo says, uh, RJ's having a party? I guess I'll tag along with you two. I can't have a guy all alone with a young woman. <laughs> <laughs> Way to make it creepy. I shivered in disgust. Since when did he start caring about me? I put him in his greasy doghouse and never spoke to him besides asking him to grab backstock once or twice. Oh, trust me, he's made up an entire story in his head. You're the ideal woman, as far as his imagination is concerned. <laughs> OP says, uh, I mean, it's a small party and RJ's only inviting a few people, so if anything, you ask him. I knew that RJ wouldn't invite him, since he dealt with Neo so much on the days that Neo didn't work, RJ was an entirely different story. There was a wheezing huff <sighs> of sudden urgency as the blob waddled to the back of the store to look for his phone. <laughs> While I and Maddie shared a glancing look, we knew that the only escape was to get out before Neo could try and squeeze his grubby, grease, and acne-filled balloon body into this party. We hear him wheeze and 
call RJ, trying to get him to let him come, bribing him with picking up his shifts for a while. Neo, please, man, I never get invited out to your parties. Maddie said they're awesome. Please, RJ, let me come over. I promise I'm different outside of work. I swear on it. Aw, he's just a lonely guy trying to make a human connection. But also, he's going to make the party significantly less enjoyable, so... I don't know. How bad do you need shifts picked up? <laughs> it sounded like Neo was on the verge of crying with how much he begged and pleaded with RJ over the phone. Just him begging had that pile completely out of breath. How many packs a day is he smoking? <laughs> As Maddie finished locking up the game drawers and the safe, we walked back into the break room where Neo was still begging. Like a dog begging for table scraps. His desperate whines were more wheezes and exhales as he struggled to breathe. I looked over at Maddie, who had a face similar to what Steve Harvey does when the contestants on Family Feud say some dumb as hell answers to easy questions. What the f you say? <laughs> God, Steve Harvey, man. Hardest working man in show business. Can't tell a joke to save his life, but he makes some funny faces. <laughs> Get him on the air. <laughs> Uh, we grabbed our bags while telling Neo that he needed to lock up since he was the last one left. We hoped that he heard, but as a precaution, Maddie also sent an email to Nick, letting him know that Neo is supposed to lock up so we wouldn't get in trouble for it. Hell yeah, man, pass that book right along. <laughs> we walk out into the cold Texas night and make our way to Maddie's truck. As we get in, I climbed into the back seat and changed out of my work clothes and back into the clothes that I'd worn to school, while Maddie just changed his shirt out for a shirt and a jacket. Seems like pretty familiar relations. What is this fraternization going on? <laughs> uh, hopping back into the front seat, we made our way over to RJ's place, which was a good 20 minute drive. As we got there, the small town home had a few cars in front of it, and we made our way in to be greeted by RJ and all of his friends. Everyone was having fun, drinking, just hanging out, singing songs that were playing on the radio while playing some beer pong. Oh, come on, 2007, nobody's got the iPod plugged in? We're listening to the radio? <laughs> All right, let me get good and drunk. That should help. <laughs> uh, now, I couldn't drink. I have what doctors call an alcohol intolerance. Now, some people think that means I'm super lightweight, but it's not. My body literally goes into anaphylactic shock if alcohol enters my body. It's a specific chemical that comes out during the fermentation of some drinks, so I just choose to avoid it all, directly. Yeah, you're not missing much. Drinking's pretty stupid, all things considered. Maddie knew this about ROP, and so did RJ. They were the ones always watching my drink and getting me drinks throughout the party to make sure there was no accidental mixing or cross-contamination or anything else that could have happened. Plus, I didn't have an EpiPen on me, so I had to be extra careful. Well, that just seems almost reckless. <laughs> we hung out, and RJ vented and raved at the phone call that he had with Neo, and how near the end of it, he put it on speaker so his best friend who we will call Gerard, could listen in on Neo. They decided to send him on a wild goose chase and gave him a riddle on how to get to RJ's place. Like, some sort of Goonies bullshit. <laughs> I love that. Uh, Gerard, I told him to go down a trail that smelt of ice, but looked warm as a summer's night. And then some other crap about how the doorway faces the moon, as the shelter of the roof shined like obsidian, or some other weird crap. I doubt he'll be able to find this place. Well, the truth is, he probably doesn't need a riddle. He locked the shop up real fast, and followed you guys the entire way. Either that, or some sort of GPS tracking, but he is gonna show up. Otherwise, why is it a story, right? RJ says, yeah. He basically gave him a description of every single town home, so Neil have to go through all of them and guess which one is the right one. But then, it happened. Cue the Jurassic Park scene where they first get to see the T-Rex. 
The ground itself felt like it was shaking our drinks. They shivered with each loud thud that came from the other side of RJ's door. We all waited with bated breath. Gerard reacted like a cat trapped in a corner and whispered and yelled, Gerard, she quick, turn up the lights. Pretend no one is here. But it was too late. <laughs> <laughs> the doorbell rang and echoed through our heads, like the Grinch speaking to the echoes in his cave. I'm an idiot! You're an idiot! You're an idiot. That's the Jim Carrey Grinch, not the best Grinch, but still a pretty good Grinch. <laughs> Without us knowing, one of RJ's party guests opened the door to that bloated ghoul of grease and led him to our very location in RJ's home. Fuck, Neo. I told you I was a master of riddles. <laughs> Weird flex, but okay. He spoke with a smug smile as he tried to saunter his way to the couch where we sat, but looking at him doing it was like two pigs fighting under a blanket, which is a quote from Steel Magnolias. I didn't quite pick that one up, but it's fine, OP. We can't all get all the references all the time. <laughs> Neo was still wearing his stained and all too tight khakis and had changed his GameStop shirt for an oversized, probably 5XL shirt that had more stains than his shorts and more holes in it than we could count. His body mass was right before me as I sat on the couch, his massive stomach a mere few inches from my face. I could hear the groans of his insides, begging for release from the hell that he put his body through. <laughs> and the stench of his sweat, mixed with copious amounts of Axe body spray, I was almost suffocating in it. I mean, if you're drunk enough, you just put your foot on his stomach and go, I need you to back up right there. <laughs> don't come any closer to that. Oh, that's right, OP can't drink alcohol. Well, you don't need to be drunk to do it. But it probably help. <laughs> Neo says, hey, May I sit next to you, OP? All the other seats are taken. OP says, Uh, there's not really enough room on the couch with Maddie, Gerard, and I on it. Neo, Oh, uh, well, why does it Maddie get up since he's the biggest? <laughs> uh, I think you're the biggest friend. At this point, I found myself scooting closer to Maddie, hoping that he would make sure that this creature couldn't squeeze, well, attempt to squeeze, his way onto the couch. Maddie, dude, just stand or get a chair from the kitchen. We've got the couch first. Plus, it only fits three people. Yes, you may sit on the floor like a loyal hound. <laughs> The neckbeard seemed to boil in his axe body spray and let out an annoyed huff. <sighs> I doubt this fine young lady feels comfortable on a couch full of men. Okay, yeah, but how is adding an even more creepy guy gonna help? <laughs> I can feel everyone on the couch cringe at that sentence. Well, I simply wanted to fade out of this plane of existence like a Final Fantasy enemy's death. Ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> uh, OP says, I'm fine. I chose to sit here. Neo, eh, fine. Well, at least let me get everyone a refill on their drinks. Yes, sus. <laughs> Maddie. Annoyed and just wanting to get things over with and have a moment of peace, decided to let him. Maddie, yeah, just grab four beers and OP wants a soda. Neo, ah, she could have a beer or something. You guys don't need to cage her in like she's a child. Oh, yes, always advocating for the maladies, aren't you? <laughs> OP says, I want a soda, okay? That's all that I want. And it's also big brain play of Maddie to be like, yes, bring us sealed drinks. Thank you. I don't trust this guy as far as I can throw him. And yeah, he's a big boy. That ain't far. <laughs> My tone was angry, but gentle, like a mother's. <laughs> 
He just hobbled off into the kitchen, and a few minutes later, he comes back with a cup of soda and five beers. Uh-oh. I said, a sealed drink. But OP doesn't see it. I took a drink of my soda before I notice a strange taste in my mouth, and I immediately spit out what I didn't drink yet. Maddie and RJ took notice as I spit it out. Maddie says, what's wrong? He was holding me while I felt my body grow hot, and I was told that my face was slowly getting red and I felt myself getting nauseous. RJ grabbed my drink from my hand and sniffed and took a small drink of my soda. RJ, Neo. Did you put vodka in her soda? Did he know? What a scumbag. Even if he didn't know, she said just a soda. Can't even follow the most simple instructions. Neo says, yeah. No one drinks just soda at a party with booze. Plus, she said she didn't want beer, so she obviously meant liquor. Can we punch him now? <laughs> Boots? Medium style? At a minimum, medium. Neo was oblivious as to what was happening as he watched me slowly slip in and out of consciousness. Gerard had left and come back from the kitchen with a horrified look with a bottle of Everclear that had the seal on it broken and some of it gone. Oh, Everclear and soda, just the fucking mixologist up in here. <laughs> Gross. Uh, even if she wasn't deathly allergic, there's a foul thing to serve to somebody. <laughs> Gerard said, Dude, he spiked her drink. Maddie went into a fit of fight or flight and got up and grabbed Neo by the scruff of his shirt and lifted him up from the recliner that he was sat in. Maddie, you fucking jackass! She's allergic to alcohol! Neo's face, from what I was told, turned from one of shock to disbelief. Neo, no, you're lying. She's faking it. If she was, then she would have told me. RJ, she did tell you by asking for just a soda. And Maddie told you just to get it for her, you prick. I mean, he is a co-worker, but does anybody here actually trust this guy? Well, definitely not now. Good, I hope his whole life suffers for it. Neo then lumbered over to try and touch OP, but RJ shielded me from him while Gerard grabbed the sausage hand of Neo to keep him from touching me. Maddie shoved Neo to the side and picked me up, carrying me out to his truck with RJ and Gerard in tow. I was told that Neo tried to follow, but Gerard tore him a new one in the front yard before getting into Maddie's truck. And from what RJ's other party guests said happened after we left, Neo threw a temper tantrum in the yard, mumbling nonsense to himself before he stormed off to his car and drove off. No more Miladies at the party? I poisoned her and it didn't even work? Yeah, I know about you. We're, we're getting a real beat on you at this point, Neo. I woke up in an ER bed and saw Maddie on my right, and he quickly stood up once he saw me being aware. I saw that I had an IV in, and from what Maddie told me, the doctor said that I was saved from anaphylactic shock since I was brought to the hospital so quickly. They gave me an EpiPen and flushed my system of alcohol to make sure that I didn't get shock again due to it still being in my system. RJ and Gerard went back home to make sure the guests left, and possibly to beat the hell out of Neo for almost killing me if he was still there. Which unfortunately, he wasn't. So what did we learn? Carry around the EpiPen always forever? Yes. <laughs> Especially at a party? Yes. My parents came a few minutes later and Maddie told them everything about how someone accidentally gave me a spike drink without knowing that I was allergic. They panicked a bit, but once they heard that it was an accident, they calmed down a little bit and thanked Maddie for taking care of me. I stayed in the ER until morning, and Maddie and my parents stayed with me in the ER until that point. Now that's dedication. Nick was notified the next morning about our encounter last night, and made sure that I wouldn't be working shifts that would let me encounter Neo. And from then on, I worked the morning shifts during winter break, and would then work on the days that Neo didn't close after school, and it was like that for about a month and a half. 
Maddie and I grew closer, and RJ and Gerard became my adoptive parental friends and would make sure that I was protected at all costs. That's right, OP has two daddies. <laughs> and for what Maddie and RJ would tell me on the days that I worked with them, Neo continued pleading with them, telling them that it was an accident, and that he didn't know, and that it was partially OP's fault for not telling him. And while yes, it was, it's not like I was asking for soda while everyone else was getting bottled beer. It would be different if all of us had solo cups and were drinking from them, and then yeah, a, a mix-up could have happened. But I was the only one in our group drinking from a cup, and even Maddie stuck up for me and said that I only wanted soda. This is why we just buy the cans, bro. Sealed drinks only. Please thanks. But this was just another wave of encounters that I would have with Neo, or, well, at least minor ones, as on the next episode of Neo the Neckbeard and his Incel Adventures. Pretty good title. <laughs> we get to see the real side of Neo, and his true Reddit karma will be shining brightly for us all. Does he use Reddit? <laughs> Fades out with Fallout New Vegas Blue Moon. Blue Moon, you saw me standing alone without a dream in my heart, without a love of my own. But it's not really fade out, because OP says thanks again for liking my stories. <laughs> and I hope to tell you the full saga of my years being alongside Neo. I had that job for about three years, and my encounters with him happened both inside and outside of work, and they got worse over the years that I worked. I thought the first post we said was 15 years. Well, 15 years in customer service, maybe three years at GameStop. Nonetheless, even after leaving that job, I still managed to encounter them. The neckbeard nice guy sells. <laughs> I even encountered one that was in his late 40s, and he was still an incel man-child. Yeah, that's far too late. He's a lost cause. <laughs> so maybe after this saga, I could do one of my short stories of other neckbeards that I met at jobs or in college or in public. Only time will tell. See you later, suckers! from the Valley of the Neckbeards, and uh, good luck in the Wasteland. All right, there we go. Neo being the antagonist that we all love to hate. It was sort of a derpy accident, but he, he took no responsibility for it. He's just like, oh, it was her fault she didn't tell me. How about you apologize to her? Try and make amends. Act like a human being for just a minute. But what do I know? It seems like a fun series. Game Shop Neckbeards always ranks pretty well. So I do hope that it'll continue, but it's been a couple months. I don't know if OP's, like, lost the passion for it or what. It's written a little bit rough. We do have uh, some people that would volunteer to edit for you in the Red X Discord, I'm sure. So join that if you get the chance. Link in the description. And of course, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit all the buttons. Check all the links. Teespring, Amazon Affiliate, etc., etc. On the end card, I'm gonna link you to some RPG horror stories. Because those are kind of game shop adjacent, and probably you'll like them. So do check that out. I thank you. And of course, always remember, friends, that you are loved. You are worthy. You definitely, definitely deserve it. And I shall see you in the next one. So until then, bye-bye. Go ahead and cut them open. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine.